Visit Sayerite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Hi, Eric Grant from Sayerite. In today's tutorial video, we're going to show you how to make this tool roll bag with zippered pouches. Not only is this a great tool bag, but it's also a wonderful project for those who are learning how to sew for the first time. If you recently purchased a sewing machine and want a quick one-day project that will teach you a ton of skills needed to start your sewing journey, this is the kit for you. This tool roll bag features four pouches with a clear vinyl window so you can see what's in each zippered pouch. This bag comes in a kit form from Sarate with all the materials you need to make it, including the plotted pattern that you can use to make more. If you're learning how to sew, this is an excellent kit. The four zippered pouches are basically constructed like a traditional box cushion. After you're done sewing all of these components, you're well on your way to knowing how to sew most canvas and upholstery projects. Let's get started. The first step, using the pattern to cut the fabric. This is the pattern you'll receive and you can see there are plot lines on it with numbers and uh, we're going to go over the cut for this middle part right here. We're going to lay out our fabric and this is the wrong side with the shiny side. This has a urethane coating on it and this is the outside surface of it. So lay out your pattern on top and you have a couple choices. The easiest way to do this is to actually glue the pattern down to the fabric so it doesn't move. But if you don't have the glue or you don't want to spray a glue, then you can use weighted sandbags in various spots and you'll obviously have to move these around and then you can cut on the lines cutting through the pattern material and also the fabric. You could also use pens if you'd like. We're going to use the spray adhesive. There are two choices in sprays that I like to use, uh, Super 77 by 3M or Super 88. Uh, these are both available at Sayerite. This one's less expensive. This one's a little bit better product, but uh, costs a lot more. We're going to use the Super 88. Okay, the pattern material, the numbers are visible this way, so this is the correct side. I've turned it over, so the numbers are obviously uh, backwards. There's going to be some overspray, so I do not recommend doing this indoors. Uh, you might want to do this in your garage. It will make the table a little bit uh, sticky and possibly the floor. You can always lay down paper if you'd like. Now I'm just coating everywhere that I need to cut out the pattern. And you do have a working time of approximately two minutes or so to get this down, so you may want to get a second helper. After that, the glue will not become nearly as tacky. Uh, Super 77 does uh, give you a little bit longer working time. The 88 does not. So what I want to do is I want to make sure this is on top of my pattern material so that I have to cut in the lines. So I don't want the lines matched up to the edge of the fabric. It's just too much work to do that. Okay, once it's fairly flat, start from the center. I've basted that down already, but work your way out, working all the air bubbles and so forth out as you go. And then uh, the part you basted down to position it, you can always peel it up a little bit. But you can see it's sticking really well and we can work all these bubbles out. And it will not transfer the glue to the fabric. So now the only thing to do, I hope you can see the pattern lines, is to cut on the lines. And does this have to be super accurate for this uh, uh, project? No, not necessarily. If you're a little bit off, it's not gonna be a big deal. So I'm just gonna glide my scissors across, as you can see here. And I'm gonna leave the pattern material on each piece as I cut. So that is done, and then we come over here, and I like to do the long passes first. So we're going to cut all these out, and we'll show you what's next. This is the Sayrite Rotary Cutter. Um, it, it can cut multiple layers of material, and also a single layer, and through my pattern material. So here we're going to cut, and I'm going to come to a stop point where I don't want to cut into my adjacent panels. So I'm going to stop there and then I just pull it backwards trying to make sure that I, the blade doesn't come in contact with the fabric when I pull it out, which it did not. And now we can cut these pieces. This tool is not necessary to cut out the patterns. You could just use scissors. Okay, once the patterns are all cut out, which they are, 
Uh, if you wanted to reuse the patterns again, you can glue them in this order and we'll show a, a screenshot of how they should be uh, placed according to the numbers. Okay, so now we're gonna take six through nine and what we'll do here is we're gonna cut out the center for, because this is actually a clear vinyl window in the middle of this. We're gonna fold the material here because you need to uh, make a slit. This is all gonna be scrap, so we just cut a slit in it. And then all you wanna do is just take your scissors and you want to cut on that line. Now, what are the, uh, the 45 degree lines at the center? Those are miter cuts. So what I'll do once I get the center cut out is I will cut on that line so that we can fold the material back to create a uh, hem. And I'll show you that after I get this cut out. So here are the, the 45s. I'm just gonna take my scissors after the center is cut out and you see the tip of my scissors are on the end of the 45. Uh, we're gonna cut uh, each one of these out. And we'll do that with all the other ones. I'm gonna leave the pattern glued to everything and here it is with the holes cut out and then we're gonna move all these aside and we're gonna start with number one. We'll grab pattern one and add a hem and hook fastener. Okay, we're gonna peel off the pattern to number one. And we're gonna flip this over to the back side. This is the side with the urethane coating. We're gonna use a clear acrylic ruler. We're gonna use uh, the chalk pencil and we're gonna strike a line two inches from every edge. The clear acrylic ruler, you can see through it, so it makes uh, marking material easy. This is a quarter inch uh, seam stick for canvas and upholstery applications. Uh, this uh, is phenomenal for uh, adhering things like hems and seams. And it's an acrylic based glue, not a rubber based glue, which means it will not yellow in time. Great stuff available from Sarite. We're gonna put it on all of the edges, very close to the edge, probably about an eighth inch or so from the edge of the material. And when you get to the end, don't use scissors, because it's hard to peel off the transfer paper. If you use scissors, put your thumb on it and break it. Now we're gonna peel off the transfer paper. We're gonna do that to all sides. We're gonna create a one inch hem, and that simply means that we're gonna fold the material to the line that we struck. That's the reason for the line. And uh, you can see that it sticks nicely. Then what I like to use is a Sarah Canvas patterning ruler and I like to crease the edge of the fabric. You don't have to ha use this, you can use any object like it, but it's a great tool for that. They're gonna come uh, to this other short side just to keep it consistent, do the same thing and then we'll do the long sides. Now we wanna do a double hem, okay? So a double hem would mean that I fold this over and I fold this over and then I have nine layers of fabric and that's a real royal pain. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a mitered corner. To do that, I'm going to use the clear acrylic ruler and there's the 45 degree line. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the 45 degree line against one of the edges and then I'm going to move it down to where that corner intersects for our first hem here and make sure that it's uh, the 45 degree lines on the edge of the fabric. Then I will take my chalk and I will strike a line at that location from edge to edge. And we're gonna do that to all four corners. Okay, we're gonna take our hooked uh, system that's two inches wide, and it's gonna go uh, down the long side of this panel. And this will fold over and capture that with a single stitch. So that means I need to base this on at one and three quarter inch from the long side. So I'm gonna take my clear acrylic ruler and place it on one and three quarter along the uh, folded edge of the fabric. And I'm gonna strike a line on both long sides, just one line on each. This is the underside of my uh, hook system. And I'm gonna put double-sided tape somewhere close to the middle just so that we can hold it in place all the way down its length. Peel off the transfer paper. I'm to about half the distance. And we're gonna stick this down. This is gonna fold over, so we're gonna put it up right up against the, uh, the one inch hem edge. And we're gonna follow that line that we struck. And then we're gonna cut this side. 
So we're going to cut right where that uh, hem falls again. Okay. Then we're going to peel off the rest of the double sided tape and this one goes on this side. Now make sure that you put it on just like I'm doing here. If you're using hem bob, sometimes the hem bob won't fit in the uh, bobbin case. And that's uh, often common because they're wound at different uh, capacities from the manufacturer. So I just pull off a little bit of uh, thread until it fits. And I can tell this is still too snug because when I pull on it, it is just way too aggressive of a bind. So in that scenario, I have to pull off even more and it's even hard to do this. Now don't pull straight up like this because you can bend the spring. So you want to pull uh, in a manner that doesn't warp the spring. So that's why I'm holding it like this and pulling until it actually spins freely. And now it's acting like a regular bobbin. Yep, it's spinning pretty nicely. So now we can insert it in the sewing machine and use it. We're going to cut off all this excess and throw this away. So we'll take our second hem bob, there are more than just two, and we'll put it on the uh, spindle here with the red piece underneath and then thread our machine as normal. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew a little bit to test my tension to make sure that I'm happy with it and some scrap. You do have a little bit of scrap from cutting the patterns. And what you want is you want that knot to be buried or if anything be a little bit on the bottom side so you have less puckering and I can see the knot on the bottom side so I'm going to give it a, about a three quarter of a turn and test it one more time. So do this before you start sewing uh, so that your project looks great. Yes that's much better. So I'm not going to sew here because when we do this hem over this will be secured down. I'm only going to sew here and over here. And I'm going to put my foot down and I'm going to use the outside of the foot with my needle in the center position to sew this uh, a hook down. And I'm going to do a little bit of reversing here at the beginning and the end. When you're sewing through hook fastener system, you can see the stitch on the top is kind of wavy. That's expected because the hook is actually causing the thread to actually rise up and do odd things. So don't let that alarm you. That's normal. So we've come back to the table here. And before we create these miters, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put double sided tape uh, on the edge up to my line. And I'm going to do this on all four sides. So I'm about an eighth inch away from the folded edge of the fabric. And I will break it at each one of the chalk lines where we created the miter. So we're going to do this on all four sides. Do not remove the uh, transfer paper yet. We're going to come back to these corners now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold them so the outside surfaces are facing each other like this. And we're going to fold it to the extreme corner. And we're going to match up this edge right here. So this edge is flush with each other, which should put our chalk lines pretty much on top of each other. Then what we're going to do is we're going to sew across here. You'll have a flap like this, this is expected, and it will take a strange shape like this, but this, we're going to do this to all four corners. So it's easiest to sew this by having this whole flap come over, that way you don't have to fight the bulk of the material. My corners matched up, my bottom edge is matched up, and it doesn't matter if you start here or you start there or if you sew the other side, doesn't matter at all. And we're just going to put this in the machine. I like to uh, reduce my stitch length to around three to four millimeters right there. And I'm going to do the same thing with the reverse. And we're going to drop our foot and sew. And we're going to do a little bit of reversing at the beginning here. And a little bit of reversing at the end. Okay, and I actually sewed off of the edge a little bit. That's good. And we're going to do this to all four corners. Okay, what I like to do when I, to cut this excess off is I like to come basically uh, perpendicular to this folded edge and I like to just trim down uh, like this very close to that stitch. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm not in the stitch, but I'm super close like that. And that cuts down on the balk at the corner. And then I cut uh, a, as close as I can to the stitch and still feel confident that it's going to hold. So. For me, that's about 
an eighth of an inch, a sixteenth of an inch. So this is cuts out the bulk and this cuts off the excess. And we're going to do that to all four corners. Okay, you're probably thinking like, holy cow, what a mess. Now take your thumb, and this is where it all comes out, and push it in. And sometimes what I do is I'll take a hard object to, to help, help it uh, take this. But before I do that, I like to push them all out so that my fabric starts to take its normal shape. You can see this one's actually pushing, pushing out pretty nicely. So we're going to do that at all four corners. I can take something, just don't take something that's too sharp that can damage your fabric and you can actually push the corner out with that because you want that as flat as possible and we'll do that to all four corners and there's your mitered corner. So now it would be difficult to put the double sided tape on, uh, that's why we put it on early so we're going to peel it off on at least these two corners that I'm going to start with and this is going to fold on this first fold and you're going to push this down and this will fold uh, equally so your miter comes out nice and flat like it is there and we will base this down on all four sides. Now see how this overlaps the hook? So when we sew this stitch this is secure the other side of the hook. So we're going to go around the corners and baste it down like this. I'm using the uh, Sarah Canvas Patterning Ruler to crease this well. Can you expect it to stick uh, exceptionally well with all this bulk and with the mitered corners? No, but it does have a pretty good mind to stay where uh, you have it so you can take it to the sewing machine and sew. So we're going to sew very close to this uh, folded edge. We don't want to sew too far out because we'll probably miss the hook. So to do this, I'm going to put my center foot on the left side up against that fold and I'm going to move my needle to the left so that I get really close to that. And I'll start up here at the corner here and we will do a little bit of reversing here. So a couple stitches and forwards and reverse. Oh, and I need to change my stitch length back to six millimeters in the reverse um, and now we'll sew. So what we want to do is we want to keep it up against here and sew around the entire perimeter. We'll show you what we do when we get to a corner. When I get to a corner, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bury my needle at that mitered edge or mitered corner. So the needle is going to basically land right in, in it as it did here. I'm going to have the needle go down and come up a slight bit so that I can pivot on the needle. I'm going to lift my foot. I'm going to roll the assembly around and then I'm going to lower my foot and sew around like this. So we're going to do this around the entire perimeter. When we get to the beginning of where we started sewing, we're going to do some reversing, but not till we get to the end where we started sewing. If you'd like, the mitered corner is a little bit bulky, but we don't have nine layers here. All we have is the center here that has excess layers, but you can take a mallet and that kind of compresses that mitered corner. We're going to set this aside and we're going to grab number 14. In this chapter, we'll grab panel number 14 and fashion a handle from it. Peel off the pattern and keep that if you're going to make more of these. And what we want to do is we want to find the center. So the, the right sides are facing each other and I'll just crease it there. And we know exactly where the center is based on that crease that I made and we'll use our chalk and we'll mark it in a couple spots at the center. And then I'm going to take my double sided tape because I like to make sure nothing moves when I take it to the machine and sew. And we're going to put it on this side and also this side. This is the long sides. Okay, we're going to peel off the transfer paper and we're going to fold to the center. So I'm going to fold this one right to the middle and crease it. And then I'm going to fold this one right to the middle and crease it. And then I'm going to put double sided tape on one side, the long side, doesn't matter which, about an eighth inch away from the fold, break it and peel off the transfer paper and fold it in half so that they are directly across from each other. So do this carefully. And that's why we baste everything because it's not going to move when I sew it. And I'm going to use this to crease it well. Okay, our needle's in the left position, which is fine. We're going to be very close to that uh, edge again. 
and I'm going to sew here, do some reversing at the beginning, and sew down this side and do some reversing at the end. So now I'm going to put it back in the machine and sew down this side, keeping my stitch in approximately that same position by having it up against the outside left of the center foot. And we're going to do the same thing here, reversing a little bit at the beginning and the end. Okay, we're going to measure three and a quarter inches and put a mark in the middle. And I'm going to flip it over here and measure three and a quarter inches and put a mark over here, which should give us approximately four inches. And what we can do is we're going to put double-sided tape on this at approximately the four inch location, a little bit short. So then we're going to peel this transfer paper up. This is an optional step. Uh, if you don't have a heavy duty sewing machine like the Serrat Alter Feed or the Serrat Fabricator or something like that, then you probably shouldn't do this step if you're doing it with a home sewing machine because this is really bulky. We fold this in half and we're going to sew from here to here down on top of this stitch. I'm going to put my needle in the right position for this and this is pretty thick. If you don't have a heavy duty sewing machine like the Serrat Alter Feed sewing machine, you may want to just skip this step if you're sewing this with a home sewing machine because you can sew this with a home sewing machine except for this part. So as you can see, it, it hardly fits under the foot already. I'm going to position my foot so it fits under there a little bit better. And there's my start point. I'm going to lower the foot and I'm going to sew on top of my previous stitches and to this mark on the other side. I'm going to do some reversing. And there's my mark on the other side and then we'll do some reversing here. This is the side with a hook on it. We're going to flip it over and we're going to use our clear acrylic ruler and we're going to measure down from in this edge or this edge, it doesn't matter, seven and a quarter inches. We're going to mark it here, seven and a quarter, and we're going to mark it here, seven and a quarter. And then I'm going to uh, just strike a line at going to the where I sewed the webbing on. I'm sorry, where I sewed the hook on the other side, so right to the stitch. Now we're going to take our one inch webbing that uh, uh, comes in the kit and we're going to lay it so that it's about an eighth inch uh, over the top of that stitch line and we're just going to mark here and then I'm going to put it over here so it's about one eighth inch uh, over top of that stitch line and mark here and this is where this is going to be fastened so this is going to go at that line that we measured and the end is going to come to there and we're going to put double sided tape on this just to hold it in place. Now is the double sided tape necessary here? Probably not. I could probably take this to the machine and sew this pretty easily, but it is a helpful step for those that uh, want to make sure that nothing moves. And we're going to base that here. And then over here, I should have peeled this off, we're going to base that here. This, this will raise the handle slightly, like that so you can get your hand underneath it. And we're going to take it to the machine and sew. I'm going to put my needle in center position and I'm going to sew basically on top of these stitches here. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I want to be close to that. And I'm going to secure this down. So I'll sew all the way across without doing any reversing. And then when I get to the end, I'm going to reverse backwards once, forwards again, and backwards again, because I want this to be on there really well. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to sew close to this edge. I am probably an eighth inch away from the edge and we're going to do the same amount of reversing there and then we're going to flip this around and we're going to do it over here. Now we'll be adding the webbing straps to the tool roll. Okay, we're going to cut the webbing to 39 inches. Now if you don't have a hot knife, you can use scissors and then you can use a lighter. Uh, we have a hot knife, so we could have cut it with a hot knife. I'm going to use the serrated edge hot knife, and I definitely want to touch the ends of the webbing or, or use a lighter and carefully uh, seal the end so it doesn't unravel. We're going to do that to all ends. We need two strips that are cut to 39 inches. These are the buckles. I will actually remove this portion of the buckle for now, 
and make sure the printing is facing down. You can see the printing here. We want to run this through so the tab is on the printing side, as you can see like that, and we want to uh, create a loop with approximately one and a half inches here, and we want to do it on this one, one and a half inches here, and we're going to sew this. I'm going to put the foot down as close as I can to the uh, edge of that buckle, and I'm going to move my needle to the left to get as close to as I can to the buckle, and you can do a box X stitch, but there's really no reason. I'm just going to sew uh, a forward stitch in reverse several times, twice. So I'm going to go over this like ooh, that many times and stop, and then I'm going to come over here to the end, about an eighth of an inch away from the end, and do the same thing here. And I'm going to do that same thing on the other buckle. Notice my needle's in the left position. Um, doesn't matter. From this handle, I'm going to mark the material three inches down with my chalk. So right here from the edge of the handle, three inches. Let's put a small little mark there. Then this is going to go on top so that the end of the buckle comes in contact with that and this edge over here of the webbing will conceal the end of the handle. And we'll do the same thing here. Now here's the printed side, so this side needs to go down like this. And we're going to sew right here uh, to secure this buckle. Okay, so I'm sewing into the handle um, and I, it doesn't matter where that other stitch is, so don't worry about that. Just sew this well here, reversing several times. You could even sew a little bit outside of the webbing on the edges if you'd like. Once that's done, lift your foot so you can move to the other side here, and we're going to sew a stitch here covering up the end of that handle. So right there looks like a good spot. We're going to sew into the handle. And that should do it and we're going to do the same thing to the other, other side. I'm going to put my clear acrylic ruler at this side of the handle, and what I recommend is marking at two inches, and uh, actually putting, putting a line either on the webbing or on the fabric, four inches, uh, eight inches, ten inches, and then, uh, let's see, fourteen inches, sixteen, and the final one is at 19 and a half, okay? And the 19 and a half should be three inches from the end. So you may want to start there just at three inches from the end. The easiest way to, to mark the other side is to just be perpendicular to this edge because the clear acrylic ruler makes that easy and just transfer your lines to the other piece of webbing. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use this stitch that secured the hook and loop, I'm sorry, the hook on the back side, and we're going to put this webbing right over top of that, and we're going to start at the three inch side over here and secure that, and then over here secure that. So we're basically right along that stitch, and then we're going to sew across here so we can put tools in here and right up against there, and we're going to just sew uh, some straight stitches uh, forward and reverse several times, right over our chalk mark. One, two, and three. Okay, so that one's secured, and then we'll come over to this one, and we'll position this right over that stitch line and sew it here. And then we're going to come over here and make sure that it's positioned over the stitch line and sew at each one of the chalk lines, just like we just did. We're going to feed the buckles on, and the way to do that is to go, see it has the logo here, and this is the underside, you can just tell. Uh, it's going to go up through here, and then it's going to go through here, and now it's secure. So when this wraps around, you've got this as your exiting part, and we're going to put the other one on in the same manner, and we're going to fold this, let's see, we're going to fold it so that it goes down, so we'll fold, so if it lays like this, I'm going to fold this once, like this, about a half inch, and another half inch, and we're going to put a stitch right down the middle. This little 
um, fold just keeps it from coming out of the buckle. So uh, you don't have to have a ton of stitches here, just enough to hold it in position. So I'm going to sew across it um, forward and back once, and maybe one more time forward. And we'll do the same thing to the other one. So there's what you get in the end. This tag shows the world that you made it yourself. And uh, we like to put it right here, which is uh, basically right by the handle on the back side. So I lift up the webbing and I just squeeze that logo in there. We're going to just sew here, doing one stitch it forward and one or two in reverse. And then when I get to the end, I'm going to do one or two reversing. And our logo is in, and we're showing the world that we made it ourselves. We'll grab panels six through nine, which is the top plate, and add a window to them. We've grabbed six, seven, eight, nine, which is the uh, top plate with the window. And we're going to take off of the pattern material off of each one, and, and we have our window material that we're going to cut to size. But first, let's concentrate on each one of these. We're going to flip all these over so the urethane side is up and the outside is down, the good side. And we're going to put double-sided tape around the perimeter uh, very close to the raw edge. And we're going to break it at the miter corner. So we're doing this on the long side, and we'll do it on the short side and break it here. And we're going to do this for all four of them. Peel off the transfer paper on all four sides, because you don't want to do this when you start to fold it. And then take the material and fold it right where the miter stops. Does this have to be exceptionally accurate? No, it does not. You just want a nice finished edge. So as you can see, the miter allows you to get that fold. And notice how it's, it's curled? Doesn't matter. You can definitely let the, the fabric uh, bend like that. Now, if you wanted to get these out, you could. You could just modify this until it sits, sat a little bit flatter, but it's not necessary. So we're going to do this to all four sides, and then we're going to do that to all four panels. Now we're going to put double-sided tape uh, on top of that hem that we just created, uh, close to the edge. Um, and we're going to do that to all four panels, and we're even the short sides here. So notice how I'm not overlapping the double-sided tape. I'm just breaking it at each side. This one's a little bit long. Well, there's no double-sided tape there. That's why it's long. OK, we're going to do that to all four. This is our uh, clear vinyl. And I'm going to cut it to 4 inches by 11 inches, and I need four of them. A pin actually marks pretty well on this stuff. The grease pencil is usually what I use on clear vinyl, but this is going to work. So we'll just mark it to size with the pin and mark it to the 11 inches and cut it. We're going to peel back the transfer paper, and that reveals the double-sided tape. And now we're going to take one of our clear vinyl panels that are cut to 4 by 11, approximately. And we're going to lay it on top and start from the center and push down like that. So it doesn't have to be perfectly centered, because you're just going to sew around here, and there you've got a great window. This is the underside. I like to sew with the top side up, and I'll start at one of the corners here, and we will sew around this perimeter, and I'm going to leave the needle in the center position here, and at this, where I start, I'm going to do a little bit of reversing, not very much, and we're just going to sew around the perimeter, keeping the edge of the fabric up against the, cent the center foot's left side. When I get to a corner here, I'm going to try to go that same distance into that corner and have the needle buried and on the way up. And then I'm going to lift the foot, pivot on the buried needle, lower the foot, because if you don't lower the foot, you're going to get a jam. And sew to the next corner and repeat that process. When I get to the end where I started, <coughs> I'm going to do some reversing. 
Now, when you're sewing this, you want to check your tension. Uh, sometimes the clear vinyl and the double-sided tape will cause uh, tension issues. So check your tension before you sew all of these on the back side to make sure that it's pulling your knot up deep into the material or just slightly into the material. Panels two through five are the back plate. We'll need to sew a loop onto those. This is two, three, four, and five, and we can take off the pattern. So we wanna grab this and just set it on the table, and then we will put this on so that there's just a little bit overhanging, as you can see here, for each one of these. I'll just put it like that. So you could me measure or whatever, but all I wanna do is mark where I want to mark where the hook stops, and I'm just going to do it on each one of these instead of measuring. This is the right side of the fabric. This is the wrong side. So now we can set this aside and grab this panel. This is the looped fastener system, and I'm going to put uh, the double-sided tape down the middle a bit, all the way down its length. Okay, now we're going to just, uh, I'll probably just mark, <clears throat> we're going to match up this edge, and we're going to mark where it falls here, and uh, it can be a little bit short, I would rather it not be long, so we're going to do this until we have it all marked up so that there's two for each one of the four pieces. Um, I'm going to peel off the transfer paper first so I don't have to peel it off of each one of these individually. That's a choice you can make. And then I'm just going to take my scissors and roughly cut where I marked it for each uh, one of these strips. There's our chalk. We're going to put it on so it's flush with that edge and right up against that chalk and put it on as straight as possible. Doesn't matter if you're a little bit off here. Uh, so don't worry about that. That's not going to make any difference. And we're going to do that to every one of these pieces. We position the needle to the right. That way I can sew to the outside of the center foot on the right side. And I'm going to do a little bit of reversing here at the beginning. And I'll sew down this side. Now you don't have to sew the short ends, but uh, it's actually easier just to bury your needle and pivot on the needle by lifting the foot and lowering it, and then sewing the short end on this one side. I can adjust it, there we go. And turning the corner and then just doing reversing at the end. Because we don't need to show the short size because uh, we're gonna be sewing a boxing onto it. So we're gonna do that to every one of these uh, hook, or these loop, I should say, fasteners. Now we're gonna grate the zipper plaques for all four pouches. We'll be grabbing patterns 15 through 22. This is our number 10 coil zipper, and I'm going to put double-sided tape, quarter inch, very close to the edge on both sides of the zipper, all the way down its length. Notice that a coil zipper has teeth that protrude on this side, and on the underside, the teeth are basically invisible. It's flat. You need to put the double-sided tape on the side that the teeth are protruding on, on both sides. So that's really important. So I've got 15 all the way to 22 is my pattern, and I'm gonna take off the pattern on each of these. We're gonna take off the double-sided tape on one side only, on the length of zipper. Then we're gonna take one of these pattern pieces, doesn't matter which, and we're actually gonna lay it so that the outside surface is facing the teeth. That means the urethane uh, coating is up. We're gonna match it up to the end, and baste it so that it's flush with the edge of the zipper. Okay, and if you want to go fast, take another one of these and just put it right beside there and baste it so that we can sew this all in one pass, which uh, cuts down on production time. So there's our zipper. This is the edge that we're going to sew, and we're going to sew 3 8 inch from this edge. 3 8 inch is basically my needle in the right position with the Ultrafeed LSZ. And I like to sew with the zipper up, and that way my teeth basically, uh, or my presser feet, basically ride right up against the, uh, uh, the, the teeth. 
So no reason to do any reversing. Just so with uh, the teeth up against the foot like that. And you notice that the, the zipper's uh, edge is right up against the outside left side of the center foot. Now that's the first stitch. The second stitch, we'll have to splay this. And here's the issue. If you splay it so this is over like that, then you're not creating a good fold. You want to splay it so that it folds back over this like this. And, and the way to do that is to actually crease it well before you put it in the sewing machine. So I like to run my fingers down here and do this. And sometimes what I do is I run this on the edge of a sharp table so the fold sits back like this. And you have to pay attention to this while you're sewing. That's the only thing that you can mess up on pretty easily. So I'm going to crease this all the way down its length first. Okay, so again, remember you got to sew through that flange here. And so I'm going to put my um, presser foot up right up against the teeth here. And I'm going to leave my needle in the right position like it is here. And uh, I'm not going to do any reversing because we're basically going to be um, cutting the zipper and you just have to make sure that see that tail sitting flat that's exactly what we want and one of the ways I do that is I take my finger and I go like this and sew to that point stop and then I make sure that it's flat I crease it and I hold my finger down stop and just keep doing this now I'm running getting ready to run into the next zipper but let's make sure, see, it wasn't flat, and that's, that's your, that could be your problem. So now it's flat. It's easy as long as you pay attention to make sure that you're sewing through that seam allowance on the bottom side. Here's my next zipper. Fold that down. We'll stop sewing right there. Not stop, but basically have my finger there. And we'll continue to do this down the entire length. Now, I didn't put any of the stuff on the other side because I want to get this down uh, in, in position before I move to that side, but we're going to repeat that step for the other side and this will be completely out of the way and already done. Okay, so I've already cut one and all you want to do is where they are joined together, cut across the zipper with some scissors and we'll separate these into four separate sections. There we go. In an effort to put the zipper so that it's all on the same end, I'm going to put an X on each one of these and as they're facing up like this and that way we know we will join our boxing to it on the X side of each one of these. In this chapter we're going to be sewing the zipper plaque to the boxing for all four pouches. So now we're taking the 10 to 13 panels, taking off the pattern, I've already done it on two of them. I've lined them all up, doesn't matter which of the short ends, but we're going to put the uh, seam stick quarter inch. Uh, against one of the short edges and I'm going to go ahead and peel off the transfer paper and then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut them apart. We're going to take each zipper plaque with the X and the X is going to be uh, basted to that end and we want this to uh, be flush and it's okay if it's slightly off a little bit. You see it looks like it's a little bit off here and here, but that's going to be fine. We're going to take our next X and we're going to do the same thing with the next piece. We're going to do this to all four pieces. Notice that outside surfaces are facing each other. This is the wrong side here and the wrong side here. So make sure you have them basted on right. And there's the half inch on our needle plate. I'm going to line it up to that and I'm going to put the needle in center position because it's in uh, right position and we're going to sew and I'm also going to do some reversing there. It's not a bad idea to reverse over your teeth as well. Just be careful that you don't get a deflected needle. The Ultra Feed really does a great job of doing that in coil zippers and do some reversing here. Then take your next panel and just do the same thing. Okay, if you look at the slider, this is the zipper slider. There's an end that's fat over here and a skinny end. This is the side where the teeth go. 
So basically, if I flip it over like this, and I take my zipper, which is sewn to the, oh, I should cut these too. I didn't do that yet. When I cut these apart, so if I, my zipper's down like this, I would separate the teeth, and obviously the teeth are on the bottom side. I'm only gonna separate them a little bit, which means this goes on like this, and that goes on like that. You wanna try to start it evenly. Yeah, that's pretty good. Next up, we'll be sewing the boxing to the top plate for all of our four pouches. I left the slider in the center of each zipper. It doesn't have to be exactly in the center. We're gonna take this, which is our top plate, and then each one of these top plates is gonna have this sewn to it. And this is just like a cushion. So what we're gonna do is outside surfaces face each other and we're gonna center this zipper over this, which will almost center the zipper coming down the corners. It won't be quite centered, but it doesn't really matter. So uh, about equal spacing from here to here. And we will start sewing uh, this around the perimeter. So we're gonna take this to the sewing machine. Okay, so uh, this is gonna be left unsewn until we get around the whole thing. I'm going to take my scissors and we're gonna sew 3 8 inch in. So I wanna cut a slit that's 3 8 inch away from this plate here so that eventually this will turn the corner. So right here, and I don't wanna go deeper than 3 8 inch, and I'm just gauging that by sight. So I'm gonna turn this around, and that slit should be about 3 8 inch from that corner, which is right about there, okay? So now they're matched up and I'm gonna put this in the machine, and 3 8 inch is basically right up against this foot. Um, now I like to take the magnetic guide and position it like this, and push it right up against that presser foot, like that. That's gonna be my 3 8 inch. My needle's in the center position, and I'm basically my needle's right across from that slit. Does it have to be right across from it? No, because we're gonna finish up that corner in a little bit here. But uh, I'm gonna start sewing here, and I am going to do a teeny bit of reversing here because we are going to be pulling fairly tight there. So just a little bit of reversing. And I want to match up this edge as I sew. So I'm just holding it together and I want to keep it up against the magnetic guide to the best of my ability. This is basically how you make a traditional box cushion. Okay, so now we're coming to this corner. So here's the, uh, the top plate with the window in it. I'm going to make a slit going uh, perpendicular to that edge at 3 8 inch approximately and going no deeper than 3 8 right like that. Okay, it's hard to see that slit, but what I wanna do is I want to stop sewing right across from that slit so I can lift up the fabric to see where the slit is and I want the needle to be directly across from it. And that is about perfect. I'm using the reverse lever to bury it right at that spot. Needle comes up slight bit. I lift the presser foot. I pivot this around and I push this around like this. Okay. And I straighten out this fabric and I match up the edges and I lower my foot and I sew this direction now. Now, you can see this, this is where we sewed the zipper together. We want that to fold this direction so it just uh, it folds naturally in the right direction. So I'm gonna sew over that, matching up the edges. They don't have to be perfect, they just have to be close. We're coming up to this next corner. I'm gonna bury my needle so I don't lose my spot. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna cut a slit perpendicular to that edge at about 3 8 inch, bang, with my scissors and then I'm gonna sew up to that. Bury the needle right across from that slit. The needle coming up slightly, lift my foot, pivot the whole assembly, and push this fold back, and pull this top plate over. Notice it's not quite up against the magnetic guide. That's not a problem. Lower my foot, don't forget to do that, otherwise you'll mess up your sewing. And sew down this side. So this is pretty easy. We're gonna do that at the last corner and then I'll show you what we do to join up the two ends of the boxing. 
Okay, so we've reached this other corner and I've already cut a slit in there just like we did before. So I want to pivot around this. It's easier to go around this corner now than it is uh, not to, but you don't want to go too deep because we have to join up the ends of the boxing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew just about a half inch and then do a little bit of reversing right there. And then we pull this assembly out. We have plenty of material to join these up. Okay, so look how nice those corners are like that. It's a little bit deep, but it's okay. Okay, so outside surfaces would face each other. There's the outside of the zipper. We already have our slider in place, so we don't have to worry about that. Easiest technique is to, uh, to use the double-sided tape and stick it on this end of this boxing. I probably could have done this prior, but this still works. And peel off the transfer paper. You can hold this together if you'd like, but it's easier this way. Outside surfaces, there's the zipper, are facing each other. Make sure that's the case and baste it on so it's nice and straight. There we go. Now we can take this to the machine. Now you've got a lot of bulk here because you've got all that fabric and I probably should sew it at a half inch so I'm going to move this over a little bit right there so it's a little bit bulk heavier duty and I'm going to sew forward over that over the teeth and to this side and then I'm just going to sew all the way in reverse which locks this together. Okay. So now we've got that sewn together and I can trim my threads. We designed this so that this would have excess in case you make a mistake, you'd have excess material. So we're gonna put a fold in this boxing. To do this, what I like to do is I like to put my finger here, that flattens out this top plate. You can see my fingers on the plate. And then I actually will just fold the material and keep, and then, then now my, I know my plate is flat. So I've put a fold in it, so I take up the excess. Okay, so now that's perfect. I put this back in, and I sew a little bit on top of my previous stitches, like that. And the edges are lined up, and my fold's going the natural way of the zipper. And I'll do a little bit of reversing here since we uh, stopped at that location. And so, basically to this corner right here and this is where we started sewing so I'm going to sew into that corner and actually even over it a little bit and just reverse right there okay okay so that is the boxing on the top plate we'll be basting and then sewing that assembly to the bottom plate next okay these are the bottom plates with the loop on them we're gonna baste it now. I know we didn't do that with the uh, front top plate, I should say, the one with the window in it, but this makes the process of sewing a little bit easier. So it looks cumbersome, but trust me, um, you can sew this on without the double-sided tape if you like. This is gonna be much easier. So we're gonna do this to all four of these uh, bottom plates. To sew on this looped back plate, it goes on like this, we need to find the corner. To do that, here's the corner here. All I need to do is look straight down and fold the fabric here. And then I wanna cut a slit going no deeper than 3 8 of an inch, like that. Okay, so that's, we know that's the corner. Here at the zipper, we'll do the same thing. It is a little bit bulkier because we have to contend with the zipper that takes the turn, but we're just gonna cut a slit there as well. So we're going to do this at all four corners and that allows us to take the turn at each corner. I've taken the double or the, the transfer paper off the double sided tape and outside surfaces face each other. So at our slit at the corner I just want this to go past by like that and basically base this side down and if it's off when we reach this corner then we can readjust. So see how it's a little bit over? That's why basting is sometimes beneficial because you can actually center a thing. So let's take, let's take up some more fabric over here and base this on until it runs into that corner appropriately. This is the same way you make a cushion, except for this is a lot smaller, which in my opinion makes it a little bit more difficult because it's not as big as a normal cushion is. So we fell on at the right spot at this corner and we will just baste it on uh, all the way around the perimeter. This has that fold, extra fold in it. So all I need to do here is basically 
create that fold that's equal as, as it is on the sewing side. So fold this in like that, base to this corner, and then we're going to baste it all the way around. And if we're not happy, we can unbaste it and rebaste it. But I think this is coming out great. You, you're going to have a little dog ear here. We'll adjust that uh, at the end. But that's typically what you should have. You should have a little piece of fabric sticking out. So we're going to baste all around. So we basically have a brick and it's basted together. So this makes sewing a lot easier. So I'm just going to stick this in on this long edge. And we are 3 8 inch away. And all we need to do now is just sew around it. Everything is stuck together. So the cumbersome job of using the basting tape makes sewing super easy. And here's our corner. So I'm going to come to that corner. Okay, and I'm going to pivot on the buried needle. Okay, now this is more than 3 8 inch, but that's because that V goes out there a little bit. So basically I'm going to uh, start sewing here and come up to my 3 8 inch. And don't let that alarm you, okay? The, these are bat tool bags and so forth, and this is a small assembly. So a small assembly like this, especially for a tool bag, is a little bit harder to do than a big giant cushion. Now we have this zipper in here, and this zipper is not going to want to fold well, so I'm going to push down on this zipper, and I'm going to come to this corner where that V is. You went a little bit too far. There we go. Bury the needle, lift the foot, and push this fabric as I pivot on that buried needle, and lower the foot, and sew down this side. Okay, coming to the last corner here. Okay, needles buried, and remember we started sewing a little bit away from that corner, so I'm going to pull the fabric out from that corner to make sure I don't sew any folds in there. And I'm just going to sew past and run into those stitches, and then I'm just going to sew into the flange or the seam allowance. And put, that way I don't have to do any reversing. See, so basically we ran into those stitches and then just sewed outside. That uh, keeps us from having to do it reversing. To turn it right side out, just slit the zipper open. The slider will go all the way to one end. And then turn it right side out and push the corners out with your fingers. So there's a corner. There's a corner. And we need to do that over here as well. And we'll show you what it looks like after we get it all turned right side out. We'll repeat that procedure for each one of our pouches. Here's a look ahead at what that pouch looks like when it's done. Our tool roll bag with four zippered pouches is now complete. Coming up next, we'll show how to use the patterns again if you wanted to make a second one. Okay, let's say we want to reuse the pattern again. Obviously, you want the numbers to be facing the wrong direction, and that way you're spraying your uh, adhesive on the back side of the Duraskrim. I've placed some paper on the bottom uh, of this so I don't get it on my fabric, and I just want to respray it. I really like to do one panel at a time, and I'll position it according to how we had the, nested the first time. So I'm going to position this on the fabric, and then I will come back and smooth it out. So this process takes a little bit longer because these have already been cut out, but we can definitely reuse the pattern. So there's the first one, and then number two is over here. We'll put the number two down, we'll spray it, and then we'll transfer it over in the right position. And we just want to do this with all the patterns so that you can make it multiple times. Um, and if you put it right side by side, you only need to make one cut. So we'll keep going until we have this whole thing filled. To save on fabric, nest each of the panels as shown here. Pause the video to study it. Coming up next is a materials and tools list. To see a detailed list of quantities included in each kit, click the PDF link in the YouTube description. Order the tool roll bag with a zippered pouches kit from Sailrite today or simply buy the plotted pattern material and make as many as you like from your own materials. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to be notified of new tutorial videos when they become available. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sailrite, thanks for watching.